I've been vibe coding mobile games and SAS apps lately and honestly, I can't stop anymore. In this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know to get going from idea to app, how to use different tools like Graw, Claude or Cursor and how to improve prompts and rules for AI to get the best results. Whether you're a developer or you just want to build something, I think this is important for all of us. So let's get into it. Now, before we dive into all of the tools, let's quickly define what vibe coding actually means because this seems to be a new term. It is kind of high, but it basically means using different AI tools, things like Grog or Claude or Cursor, and also combining them with speech to text, actually using something like Super Whisper or other tools that will combine your voice into text. And therefore you can pretty much control, you can build a whole application just with text or with words, and you don't even have to dive into actual code. And that is what vibe coding currently stands for. While I know many of you will say, oh, Simon, but that you can't build real apps like that. Let me say, yes, you can actually do. And I got some great results out of this process myself in building just like this. Okay, so now let's go through the actual steps of going from idea to your app. I currently always start with Grok. You can get really great results, especially if you use the deep search feature of Grok. For example, what I want to do is I want to get a specification or a requirements file for the application or thing I want to build. In this case, I wanted to have a React Native application. So it's important that you know some technologies. For example, if you want to build a mobile game, React Native with Expo is the way to go. And I wanted to have like a Lemonade Tycoon game. It must be extremely addictive because it's a game. And I want to make, uh, don't want to make those sources. As a result, you will get a pretty great overview of what your game should look like, how the addictive features should be, uh, anything else regarding the progress, like this is incredible. And I also did this, for example, I want to build a doodle jump clone with react. Give me a list of technologies. If you're not sure about what you should use, then just ask for it. So here are the technologies you can use reanimated sounds. Then here are the required projects. Actually, you could now follow this and set this up locally. However, I like to keep this open and use it again later because my second step looks a bit different. Now, my current way of starting most of these vibe coded projects is by using bolt.new. I know there are several other like V0 from Vercel and there are many others coming up from mobile apps. We've seen Replit before as well, but I usually get kind of quite good results with Bolt at this point. You can also now use Figma with Bolt, but that's a different story like keeping up with all the news. You want to start with something like build a mobile app that does something and then Bolt will usually give you a mobile app. However, if you want to build something uh, for the web, you can of course also use any other kind of technology. If you want to build like a SaaS, I would recommend some something like Next.js instead. And then Bolt will throw up something like here. It will create you initial application that could look like this, or uh, in this case, I was actually doing a web project for which I kind of pasted in the entire respins that I got from Grok. Additionally, this was like a doodle jump try and it kind of nailed it. So what you get out of Bolt is pretty good. If you don't want to use this, you could directly go to cursor locally and set up a project if you feel fine about that. If don't, then use Bolt, hit export and then download your code and then you can continue locally. Now that you get your code locally, the real fun actually begins. So first of all, you wanna get an AI editor like Cursor or Windsurf. I currently am a big fan of Cursor, so simply download it for the appropriate platform. Theoretically, you could just keep playing with Bolt.new, V0, keep iterating with the chat, but I feel like it is a lot more powerful to use Cursor and directly interact with the code and directly tell it specifically where you wanna update things. But to get the most out of Cursor, you need to apply some settings. So here I am in the project that I downloaded from bolt.new. If I want to, I can all, of course already do something like bun install, which installs some dependencies. You can also use npm. So you see at this point, you might get a bit technical, but with expo, it's actually quite easy. So you can just run bun x expo. This would allow you to open up your application with a QR code. You can, by the way, also already do this uh, from bolt.new and with that QR code, just download the Expo Go application, open your app and you should have your app up and running on your device in pretty much no time, like, like 10 seconds probably until it finally comes up. The only problem might be that the code you got from Bolt or V0 isn't actually working correctly. 
In that case, however, cursor will assist you and help you to fix that. So let's go through a few settings. So from the top, you can select cursor settings and then you want to go to features. These are the features I've currently selected. I think most of them are actually automatically enabled, but I definitely also made sure to enable auto run mode. This is important for cursor agents, which is a super powerful feature that will reason with itself and find problems uh, along the way and not just answer like one thing. This was, by the way, previously called YOLO mode, I think. On top of that, what I have uh, enabled as well is I added a couple of own docs. For example, I use a lot of Expo or React Native, I use Native Win, and I like to add the new docs. Even for things like Links, which is a new framework, you can just add a new doc page and it will be indexed and used in cursor for the completion. Additionally, the only model I have currently selected is Claude 3.7 Sonnet. This definitely gave me the absolutely best results. Sonnet thinking wasn't working too great for me either. So so nothing else in here is actually enabled. In terms of rules, I have one simple rule. Uh, we're gonna come back to that in the end because that's kind of fun. By the way, if you want to learn more about vibe coding and the flow of these tools and prompts and improvements, then check out vibecodecourse.com. I already got that domain. I set up a little uh, email landing page here. So enter your email. You will be on a list of my vibe code course that I have planned for the next time. Jump in there and let me know what you would like to see more of. Where do you struggle with? Where you're coming from? Do you have developer experience or not? You can also, of course, leave something in the comments. I would really love to know what you're struggling with if you want to get more into vibe coding, I would love to help you out. Now one additional feature of Cursor you want to use are the rules. They slightly changed this. So previously this was like a file that was called .cursor rules. Now there's an entire folder of different rules that you can set up under .cursor slash rules and they have the MDC uh, extension. In those rules you can just select if you want to use this manually agent requested auto attach or always and if you do this you see this rule attached to every chat and command if you change it here you can select specific file patterns and that is really strong so I usually have one general rule in my um, project which is like uh, keep things easy don't repeat yourself the usual dry patterns and Generating an MDC is actually quite easy. You don't have to come up with this self, just as Grok, just as Claude Sonnet or anything, and it will give you a good MDC. However, you want to keep an eye on this. So especially if you work with front end and back end and separate technologies, you can have a specific pattern. So if you're using React, TSX would usually match everything in the, like the front end, but also if you're using Next.js, the routes are the same, but you could maybe have a split between like .ts. Uh, you can also check here for JSON or anything else. And with Python, of course, it's a different story. However, try to make this as small and relevant as possible. So this was just one that I think uh, Grok gave me. It is actually a bit too much. I would split this out into multiple rules and then you can either automatically attach it or just manually reference those rules in the composer. Now, one thing I hinted at before was the MCP self, the Model Context Protocol. This is currently the latest rage and the latest hype besides hype wipe coding. Um, and the only thing I have enabled here is actually a little fun thing because there was a script that I found that can play a little sound and I try to trigger this sound whenever something is complete. So that's what I specified here. Run my play completion sound every time you finish a coding task. That means I can give cursor, the agent, something to do that usually takes a couple of minutes at this point. But in the background, I will then hear this little ping, which pings my MC uh, using this model context protocol, my little index.js. And there's a lot more that you can do with MCP. So let me know if you want to learn more about this, because that is a whole new story. You can connect to backends and get database schemas and do all kinds of crazy things with it. Now coming back to whatever app you are working on. You got this project, you've got cursor configured, you got the cursor rules. Now it's usually time to bring in your requirements to just have this in a project. So you can now go back to Grok where you initially asked for all these deep research and you can say something like give me results in the markdown format. You can then copy this over and then you have a nice requirements file for your application really handy in your project. So you can always now come back to this document and easily reference this with cursor. Now the real power of cursor is really this input here where we have selected the agent mode. Uh, I have my auto model selected which is just slot 3.7 and then we can do anything we want about our code. So right now my game is for some reason not really playable. 
I can't play the game, the ball isn't moving. You can just go ahead with like really simple prompts at this point. You can reference files, you can reference your rules, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that you keep it like vibe because that's the whole thing about vibe coding. Really, just put in your thoughts and what you see. The game isn't working, tell cursor agent that it's not working. You don't have to be a genius. I haven't touched any of the code in here yet. So I'm usually just bouncing around ideas here and saying, okay, this isn't working or I want a button here. Then I put this to the background because this can sometimes take a couple of minutes and then I hear my ping in the background and then I will come back and keep I'm editing on the code. This also allows me to actually work on multiple projects at the same time. So I might have like the onboarding AI project I work on and then I have a little game here and I can just give a little prompt, close it for five minutes or just come back at another point uh, during my day and just put in a new prompt and just over days, I keep developing these projects. But here's an important part. If you're not a developer, do yourself a favor and go to github.com and you want to do, you want to create a repository for your application if you haven't done that before. So you can simply cre create new repository, give it a name and it will tell you what you need to do in your project because cursor or any kind of AI will sometimes mess up your entire project. And you've probably seen those tweets where people said, oh, I lost everything from the last three months. Yeah, that can happen. So use a repository that is code control and you want to commit your code often. So that's really a simple way to make sure everything is saved at like a checkpoint. If cursor then like goes crazy afterwards and deletes all your file, no problem. You can always come back to a checkpoint. So please initialize a GitHub repository in your project as early as possible. Whether you're building a game or a SAS or anything, at some point you will require a backend. And my recommendation currently is definitely to use Superbase as your backend. It's probably the easiest way for most technical and non-technical people to spin up a backend, which consists of a simple SQL database. So really, you, you can just create an account for free, create a project, and then you can get started. Cursor or any other tool will give you the right SQL commands that you can edit in the SQL editor and just create the tables for your project, really. I know people like to use Firebase from Google in the past, but there are problems. You're kind of vendor locked in, and some people had really problems with like unexpected high usage builds. With Superbase, you don't have those problems. You can start completely for free. You have a fixed price at some point if you want to, and you're not really locked in because this is just a SQL database in the cloud. One more fun thing I like to add to my vibe coding stack is a tool that takes text to speech. Uh, I've previously used Super Whisper and recently on Product Hound I found this one called uh, whisperflow.ai. You can get started for free with these tools and it's unbelievable funny because sometimes I'm even too lazy to type. So I would go ahead about this and then go into this and do something like, hey, can you please just update the code? and it just really works very, very snappy at this point. I don't know about you, it is kind of strange. Maybe I'm like Gen Z something and this still feels strange, but I maybe in the future, we're just gonna code by doing voice prompts. So I'm actually fine getting rid of this and not hitting the right like shortcut or brackets at some point and just telling the AI to use those tools. So try it out. There are a couple of tools out there that you can use uh, and it's definitely part of the essential vibe coding stack. If you happen to build a game or anything that requires some graphic assets, there are a whole lot of tools that you can use which will give you great AI generated graphics. My favorite is usually Midjourney. However, creating things with Midjourney comes at like a little learning curve in how you get the best prompts. However, you can always just explore what other people have done. Uh, if you go into some, you will always find the uh, prompt they used, even including some flex for some images. Uh, you can also search for specific like game assets and that would give you a list of game assets that people have created before and you can reuse their prompts and just see what works. It's kind of fun. You can of course also use DALI 3 which is by right now uh, creating amazing images as well. Or if you just like looking for standard game assets, there are still a lot of traditional pages like FreePig uh, and more that Grok, by the way, recommended to me when I was building one of my games. So on those pages, you can of course also find great graphics that go beyond AI generated content and just good solid assets for your apps and games.
A couple of minutes ago, I've shown you quickly how you can spin up your local project that you take from Bolt.new or one of those platforms and spin it up with Expo 2, have a preview here in a simulator or even on your actual physical device. And that is my recommendation, especially if you go for mobile games, use Expo. Um, most of these tools will give you Expo code and Expo helps you to build your application in the cloud. There are a lot of other videos, you can check out most of the videos on this channel as well, including how to build your Expo app locally or in the cloud and how you can then get it into uh, the App Store for iOS and Android. Those steps are not super easy and AI can only get you so far, but it's definitely something everyone can do even without a technical background, especially if you're using Expo. I know what we get from AI coding and and especially vibe coding isn't perfect. Especially seasoned developers will tell you, oh, this will never replace me, this is not great. But you have to consider, the tools are only getting better from this point on. Claude 3.7 was a major upgrade in what I see and what code can do. Like last year, I had Copilot and I was happy to complete one line. Now with the agent mode and Claude's on it, I'm building a complete SES with Next.js and I haven't written a single line of code. Honestly, I know how to code, but I still don't want to do it anymore at this point. And this really makes me curious about like all the upcoming things over the next time. I would really encourage you to give it a try, use the tools that I've highlighted, go a bit deeper into some of the topics that we've mentioned to really build out a solid foundation of your AI skills and definitely let me know if you need any support. If you want to go with your idea to the App Store, also check out galaxies.dev, which is my platform to help everyone with React Native to build, submit and release their applications. We have a massive new Zero to Hero mission that will tell you everything about coding. And if you want to stay wipe, check out the wipecodecourse.com, get on the email list and let me know what you want to see in the course. I'm really excited about this topic and I hope I can show it more to you over the next time. So stay subscribed, hit the like button for more videos to come and I will catch you in the next one. And until then, happy coding and vibing. Simon.